Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishal. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, so from the thumbnail, uh, you get to know about the topic of today's video. Uh, so recently one of my paper uh, got rejected from one of the conferences. And in this video, I'll be talking about that. Uh, because, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a larger part of a researcher life that you will do a lot of work. You will submit the paper to some conferences. And finally, after the review happened, uh, your paper have a high chance, high probability that it will get rejected. And, you know, it's not new to me. Previously, also, my paper got rejected. Uh, but, you know, every time <laughs> you got a rejection, it, it, it affects you. Uh, so that's why in this video, I'll be telling about it because this is a harsh reality of our resources life that, you know, you have to go through it. There may be, you know, multiple rejection, then your paper might get accepted in a conference. So in this video, I'll be telling you the overall process of this paper. Uh, so how we found the problem statement, uh, how I worked on the on developing that particular problem statement and getting the solution. Then, you know, how I have written the uh, written the paper because writing paper itself is a very, uh, very, very hectic job. And then, you know, the overall review process and finally, uh, what are the reviews and that is there and why my paper got rejected. So everything I'm going to discuss in this video. So if you are someone uh, who is aspiring uh, to come to PhD and do research, uh, this video will be really, really helpful for you because you must know about all the aspect of, uh, of a PhD life and uh, this kind of rejection that frequently happens uh, in, in a researcher's life. So that's why if you want to know uh, in detail about the whole story, uh, please do watch the video till end. And if you are new to this particular channel, I'm again saying please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly. Without further ado, let's get started into today's video. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, so from last year, uh, around this time, I have started working in this project. And this was kind of an extension of the work that we have done uh, in, in the past. And this time we are doing the work in a large scale. So now we have a lot of data and on which we have to train the model. So the first difficulty was to collect the data. So there, it was a huge data set that we are, we are planning to you know, curate and that data set we are collecting from different sources. So the first challenge was to collect the data set and it took me around one and a half months to collect the data set because I was running the script to download the data set and then I have to make it in a, in a specific format. So everything it takes around one and a half months then I starting designing the model and you know training a particular machine learning model on a huge data like if you have billions of data suppose that's a difficult thing because the model will take a lot of time to train and during that time you have no work like you have put your model into a training and you are doing nothing you are just waiting to get the result and based on the result you will be getting a decision so that happens for a quite a long time like around three to four months i struggled to build the model because uh, i didn't know uh, so initially you, you will be you won't be knowing whether you have built a correct model or not so you will have some hypothesis based on that the model will be developed and then you will train it and then you will see the results and if the results are not coming well then there are some mistakes that you have done in the model or there are some changes that you have to do and in our model uh, if you are if you're familiar with machine learning so there are multiple losses so generally in a machine learning model there is a single loss like classification loss or regression loss but in our case there are four or five losses and all the loss we have to you know back propagate uh, through the model and the, all the loss has to be reduced so there is there there are a lot of struggle that was there so i i, I almost struggled for around six months and finally i get this work done and then you know when you when you are done with the basic model then also there will be a lot of experiment that you that you have to do to publish a paper so if you just say that our model is a good model that is doing better than the others that is not sufficient uh, what you need to do is you need to show some different aspects uh, of your model like uh, you know as i was saying there are suppose four losses or five losses that i have in my model so now you know now whoever, whoever will be reviewing a paper they might ask that if you if you remove few of the losses how how your model will perform or suppose there are something called hyperparameter 
parameters in 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 machine learning so they will say that you you tune your model on different hyper parameter setting and then show the result so there are a lot of things that you need to do uh, so these are called the you know supporting experiment uh, so the basic or main experiment was done but this supporting experiments was there and these i was doing for, for in the in the first half of uh, 2022 when i was uh, creating courses so parallelly i was uh, doing this uh, supporting thing and by the end of april uh, almost all the experiment was done and that time we have decided that we will be submitting this paper uh, to the conference and this conference was one of the top top tier conferences in uh, machine machine learning domain and computer science and you know if you get your paper uh, through this this type of conference that's a huge thing and this is the first time actually i was submitting my paper in in this particular conference and you know i started writing the paper so i talked with my uh, supervisor uh, so he said let's uh, submit it so the deadline was uh, for submitting the paper in this conference was around may 20th and i talked with my professor like around april 15th and then we decided that we'll be submitting the paper so we have around one month and few days uh, to make uh, the paper ready now i'll tell you the process of writing a research paper because this is also equally important uh, so your experiments you know design your model everything is important but you have to write it in a proper way in the research paper so that whoever will read your paper uh, whoever will review your paper uh, they should understand it and they should get the overall idea that you want to convey and that's why writing a research paper is also important so the first thing that you have to you have to mention in your research paper is that what are the important tasks uh, that you are addressing what are the challenges that is there in the field or that, that, that is there in the research field that you are challenging and what are the novelty that you are bringing uh, so that is something that you have to mention in the in the research paper in a in a proper way and then you have to write everything like your detail of your model um, you know your experiment section so everything you have to write uh, so so for each conference there is a page limit and for this particular conference uh, there is a format that is given to us and the page limit was around 10 paper uh, 10 pages so i have started writing the paper and uh, as i was saying so this is the first time i'm writing the paper for this conference so i was reading a lot of paper which was published in this conference to get a flavor that you know uh, how i have to write my paper and i have i have i have read around 10 to 15 papers on 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 this particular conference and then i got an idea that you know i already had had some idea about this conference but yeah before writing the paper i was again reading uh, the papers and trying to understand that how i have to convey it so basically the structure of the paper is for especially for machine learning and computer science is like that first you have to write the abstract then you have to give a uh, brief introduction a uh, brief overview of your of your of your whole paper so that will come in the introduction section then you will write about the previous work uh, that is there so we typically call it related work section then you we move directly into the model so we give the detail of detail architecture of our machine learning model and finally we put the experimental section whatever the experiments that we have done so these are the basic you know structure of a paper in machine learning model and i have started writing this paper and by end of uh, you know may uh, by end of april uh, i was almost done with my my part so i have written the paper and then i uh, you know give it to my supervisor so and then what happened is supervisors keep on checking the paper he, he keep on doing the changes he keep on marking different places where uh, it is not correct he is saying and we we, we had multiple meetings uh, for those two weeks uh, yeah, the submission was in mid uh, 15th or 20th so those 20 days in 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 may we had multiple meetings among ourselves me, me my guide my co-supervisor my collaborator and there's one, one, one other collaborator also there so every one of us we had multiple meetings and we discussed about the paper so the whole paper the structure that i had submitted to my guide that got completely changed and the final version was far more different than what i have written and that is something was a new experience for me because as i was saying i am a very junior researcher and this is just my second paper in phd uh, so i also hadn't uh, didn't have that much idea so i have written the paper from my perspective whatever i've read but yeah these my guide and my collaborator they are much more experienced so they have changed it completely so this is how the whole process goes on for the last 20 uh, days we keep on changing uh, different things i have done few other experiments also in that phase 
and somehow we we made you know we made the paper ready so i still remember before the submission day on 20th may uh, on the day before i worked all night to keep the uh, to do the changes so my guide called me midnight 3 at uh, 3 am so he is not uh, not in india he is working from from uh, foreign so that's why there is a time gap so that's why we we met on uh, 3 am in the in the midnight and he told me some changes and he worked for another, another one hour and do the changes so this is how the whole thing so last few days will be very hectic uh, for anyone because you know this is a common uh, natural instinct for the engineers that they do more work before the deadline so yeah eventually we submit the paper on 28th uh with finger crossed and we hoped for the best now i'll tell you what what is the revision process or review process now once you submit the paper uh, so like in this conference there are around 10000 paper was submitted and now the typical process is this conference will review the uh, paper uh, so there are a lot of reviewers is there so typically reviewers are you know professors or phd students or whoever the researchers is there in this uh, machine learning or ai field uh, who, whoever will be taking part in this conference so they will uh, get the paper so uh, i hope you understand there are 10000 papers so you know each reviewer will get at least so, so there will be around 1000 or 1500 reviewers at, at most Uh, so that much researcher will be there in in machine learning in ai all over the world and and so i hope you understand that each reviewer will get at least 10 papers so this is how the whole system is going on in each conference the number of submission is this much so like it is around 10000 um, submission is there and uh, the conference has to review those paper so the review process review process typically it takes for two months and uh, in in the in the you know august midweek uh, we got the uh, review and there are four reviewers was there uh, in my paper so one reviewer told that this paper uh, should get accepted uh, so it was not a strong accept it was a weak accept weak accept means that is okay it should be accepted but it's not the full marks so uh, so there are rating of uh, you know 3 4 5 6 7 so there are five a uh, scale you uh, the reviewer can give you the rating uh, so three means uh, completely reject four means borderline reject five means it's borderline accept borderline accept means it should be accepted also it shouldn't be accepted also this kind of it's not like he is not giving a, com- a confident verdict six means weak accept and seven means it's a strong accept uh, so my paper got six uh, by by one reviewer and the rest three reviewers they got five uh, sorry four four means borderline uh, borderline rejection now you know they got a lot of reviews that you know what are the shortcomings of our project of our paper and you know all the flaws and everything they have written and they have asked for you know kind of you have to justify that you know whatever the questions they have raised now you have to justify so there are seven days uh, rebuttal phase where you can write the uh, write the reviews and you can submit and after that there was another seven days when, when you can discuss with your reviewer about about uh, this whatever the comments they have given and whatever your responses and whether they are they are agreeing with you or not so this is kind of a facebook comments kind of thing so they will comment something then you will you will you will, you will write in response something so this is how uh, it will be going on uh, so for our case what happened is one of the reviewer who got four initially uh, that means borderline reject he raised it to six that means he he came to weak accept so that was a very positive sign for us because two people now was was or was for the accepting of the paper but the problem happened is other two reviewers they didn't come and talk uh, you know talk with us uh, during that uh, phase that seven days phase so they didn't comment anything uh, we have we have given them the response they have no reply so that was the problem even you know uh, our head reviewer so there is a meta reviewer uh, concept is there uh, so apart from this four reviewer there will be a meta reviewer uh, who will be kind of coordinating everything so he also comes and uh, you know type there that why the other two reviewers are not responding but you know i i understand because there are a lot of papers that these reviewers are also getting and they himself uh, they themselves have some paper which is submitted in this conference so everyone is busy so that's why they didn't get time maybe uh, to to reply our our responses and comments so that was the problem so at the end of the rebuttal phase now we have two we accept um, that means we have two six and two fours uh, so our overall rating was five but you know we are hoping that if any one of these uh, two people raise it to 5 or 6 there is a better chance of accepting this paper so that was our kind of you know idea that it might not get accepted because uh, if i get 5.5 or like that then the paper might get accepted but as 
uh, you know do those two reviewers they didn't give us uh, any response so that's why the the you know problem was there so it might get rejected but still uh, i i had a hope uh, i didn't have the experience of publishing this paper so i don't know uh, what is kind of the threshold for getting this paper so i hoped for it but by the mid of september uh, i got the result and it was rejected so the meta reviewer are saying that as 50% people are uh, for the paper and 51% people are not uh, for the paper so for the benefit of doubt he rejected the paper so that was a bit unfortunate for me because uh, i was thinking if these two people at least comes up and give some response and raise it to 5 at least uh then there was a chance of uh, getting the paper accepted but yeah anyhow uh, that was the response that i got from the reviewers and i changed my paper after that whatever the you know they are saying what are the uh, flaws of this paper so we have rectified it we have addressed it and now we have submitted it to into another conferences so the whole point of making this video was so i try i wanted to make this video a couple of days back but that time i was not you know as you know the you know when the paper got uh, rejected you you will be a bit depressed and also that's why i was not making the video because it took me some time to accept it and then uh, i have again submitted it to into another conference but the point of making this video is this is a very common thing in researchers life even you know even if you do a lot of hard work even if you write a very good paper but it may happen that your paper might get rejected so that's why you know if you are someone who is aspiring to be a researcher uh, so you should know about it so it's it's mostly this kind of rejections and all will be going on in your life and very rarely there they will come one day that your paper will be accepted and i i i forgot to mention one stat in this particular conference where my paper got rejected the paper accepted was 25% accepted rate, acceptance rate was 25% that means the 10000 paper that got submitted only 2500 paper got accepted and rest 7 7500 paper got rejected so this was the stat nowadays in in any ml conference and it has been seen typically that you have to submit the paper in two three conferences then only your paper will be getting getting accepted because by after submitting two three uh, places you will get a rough idea about or uh, about you know how your paper is so reviewer will give you the reviews and based on that you will be doing the changes and after you submit for two three uh, places your paper will be kind of complete and then it will get accepted so this is how the whole system is going on in machine learning research because there are a lot of people are doing research there are a lot of paper coming out so that's why getting it through a conference is very difficult so that's it guys that's it about this video uh, i i i hope i have conveyed my message uh, that i wanted to give all the students uh, who are also aspiring to come to research and doing phd so this is a, this is a hard reality of it but this shouldn't you know discourage you coming in because that is the challenge you know you will do the hard work again and after doing so many hard work once your paper will get accepted sometime then that is the joy that you will be getting so that's it guys if you like this video please like it and share this video to many other people and if you are new to this particular channel please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly that's it about this video i'll be meeting in the next video until then bye